Uh, hey everyone, and welcome to the Oxygen post production session on colour grading at the 9th Indies Film Festival, dedicated to emerging filmmakers and film lovers all over the country. Uh, running three sessions until the 30th of April, reaching more audiences with the support of the BFI awarding funds from the natural, uh, National Lottery. Uh, in today's session, we're going to be going through my recent project, which is Firelight, uh, produced by Oxygen Films. Now, I'm just going to start off by telling you a little bit about myself. So I've just recently graduated from the Northern Film School. Uh, I've been with DaVinci Resolve for, uh, for about a year and a half now. And uh, like most people watching this, I'm still relatively new to the software. But we can start to uh, you know, break down things that I already know. So like most, um, like most softwares of its types, we're going to go into preferences here. And uh, we're just going to start off with uh, preferences there. Uh, Uh, so, uh, so like most uh, softwares of its types, so uh, like most softwares of its types, we're going to go into project settings, and I'm just going to give you a brief description of uh, set, setting up uh, project settings. Now, I've not really dwelled much into this much, but um, one thing I do always try and make do uh, is uh, re make sure the project settings are set to HD. Now, I think this project was shot in 4K or 2K. Uh, so um, the file is very big and the image is very big. Now, one thing we can do is change it to HD. Um, yeah, one thing we can do is change it to HD. And uh, what this allows us to do is make sure it doesn't choke the system, make sure it doesn't, uh, you know, the inch is not very slow. Uh, so if we just find the right setting here, uh, it should come up nice to and it, yeah, there we go. So it's like a square. So this means the image will fit onto frame nicely. And as a color grader, we can color grade the entire shot without worrying of any of the image being cropped. And now 25 frames per second, that's fine. Video format. Uh, we go on to capture and playback and just make sure uh, we are saving it to the um, to the to the right place. Um, and that all seems to be good. And then we can click save and then that should set it uh, perfectly there. There we go. Now we've got the entire frame. Uh, I'm going to go to the start. Now, as you can see, uh, DaVinci's uh, interface is uh, quite intimidating at first. Uh, but we, what we can do, just got to delete these screenshots from the last one. Uh, there we go. All sorted. Uh, yeah, what we can do is start to break down each section and we can start to talk about really what each section is doing, uh, why it's there, and sort of how I used it for certain shots. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is um, is the scopes. So what I can do is we can just go over here and we can see right now it's on the Parade scope. So we can just uh, click this uh, little box here, just in the second one in from the right. And that gives us all four scopes. Now, now uh, at first they're a little bit uh, confusing. But as I slowly started to um, break down DaVinci uh, in the past year, I've slowly sort of start to understand what each scope's doing, uh, how it's useful. And uh, and if you don't have like the best monitor uh, starting out with DaVinci, then it's always good to refer to the scopes because they are the most accurate thing you can use on here. Um, so yeah, let's start with the parade, which was what it was on before. As you can see, we've got the reds, uh, the greens and the blues all uh, showing their sort of levels here. Now, this is really good for uh, white balancing. So as you can see, this is a nice sort of even mix of colors. So for, that's telling me that the um, the white balance is perfect. Maybe sometimes the greens might be a little bit up, blues might be down, the reds down, be down. It's useful seeing this so you can know which sort of colors to bring down. Uh, but DaVinci can do this automatically, which I will move on to uh, later on in the project. Uh, and as you can see here, we've got the waveform. The waveform is really good for making sure no colors are clipping. 
So as you can see right now, all, all the colours are running very smooth. Nothing's too vibrant, nothing's too vivid. It's all pretty good so far. And the vector scope, the vector scope is really good for saturation. Uh, so making sure no saturation is popping, there isn't, and like, if there is a lot of saturation, usually you can see it straight away by eye. It's uh, very obvious, but this scope here is to tell you, uh, you know, how far you are breaching with it and what color tends to be saturating the most. Uh, what's important about this as well, if you go onto the little uh, little slider thing here, oh, I'll just let's, let's show you a shot, I'll just go back to that. Yeah, so if you go onto the little slider thing here, just on the right and click it to show skin tone indicator, it basically does the same thing, but for skin tones rather than the whole image. So again, this is useful uh, if you are dealing with skin tones and uh, matching up skin tones, or you just want to genuinely check if the saturation or colors of the skin tone isn't too uh, bright or too vivid. I've definitely had to use this a few times and then um, I'll be able to show you a good example of it later on. Uh, so we can just reset the view there and just show the normal grade. And the histogram, the histogram again, for me so far, is sort of like the parade. You know, you can see uh, sort of the levels of the colors, you know, the greens, the reds and the blues, and just get an overall view of uh, what's, what's sort of balance your image is at. And yeah, and that's everything for the, uh, for the scopes. Here, you've got the keyframes. So uh, as you can see, you've got some keyframe section. Now, if you are a colorist starting out, you will be using a lot of keyframes. I tended to use it on almost every shot, I believe or within at least every scene of uh, every shot of every scene, sorry. And um, yeah, obviously it's got its own in-house FX system, DaVinci does, but this is primarily for color. So as you can see, it's got the corrector one, corrector two, corrector three. This is just saying that you've got uh, three nodes on there and uh, you can sort of pick and choose which frame you want it at. Again, I'm only giving a brief description. I will be going into tracking later on. Um, and showing you how uh, I did it for a certain shot within this project. Um, and moving over, we've got now, we've now got the four main primary reels. Now, again, this is how I start off my grade most of the time. Uh, so you've got the lift, the gamma, the gain, and the offset. The gamma and the gain are the two most important ones I use when I'm starting off along with contrast, uh, because you can get an overall sense of how bright the image is uh, and what color and what palette you sort of want to go for in the gamma section. And then moving over, you've also got the little slides. So again, you can control the reds, the greens, the blues, and sort of even it out that way. Uh, and in this section, we've got the shadows, the midtones, the highlights, and the offset. Now the highlights and midtones are really important for skin color. And like uh, a scene like this is sat next to a really bright window. So I had to do a little bit with the highlights, but nothing too complicated for now. This sort of, the whole skin tone section can go really deep, but um, obviously I've still got a long way to go before um, I, uh, I know too much about it. And again, the shadows, controlling where the shadows hit, how deep they are, how dark you wanna go um, and stuff like that. And now we can move over. Again, you've got the, uh, the red and the green and the blue output. This is just deciding how much of a certain color you wanna lift. If you're white balancing, if you look at your uh, levels here, in the parade and like if we move the the reds up you can see that the blues increase and the reds go down so we just set that back we don't want to we don't want to change that image too much and yeah so sort of stuff like that and then you can sort of do what uh it's sort of up to you which how you want to start off i always think the wheels are the easiest way to go just because you can be a lot more accurate with them uh they tend to be a lot easier to use and they're just um and it's just there, it's just easier. Uh, but uh, people also uh, use the shadows, uh, the, the curves, sorry. Now the curve section is very in depth. There's a lot of different slides you can go on. And again, I'm gonna give you a brief description of each one. So we've got the, the white here, which controls the overall like whiteness of the image, we've got the reds and the greens and the blues again. So if we just click on blues and we can just bring them down or bring them up, you can see that it's, uh, it's changing the way the light hits. Uh, and we just left it at that for now. And again, hue versus hue, this is just changing certain colors. So if we just click on this panel here, and it, let's say if I click on the browns in the background and move it, yeah, it's gonna push towards more of a purple color. Um, but again, I haven't really used this tool yet, but um, 
I'm sure I will find a use for it uh, eventually in my career. Hue versus saturation. This is an important one that I've been using a lot and I used it actually in this shot. So again, if we click on the browns, you know, we can pull it down and it'll become a lot more washed out and a lot more, you know, like it's not like a, lot, a lot more vacant, but if we push it up, it'll come a lot more vibrant, vibrant and uh, a lot more saturated. Again, very important. And you can, uh, you can like keyframe uh, certain areas of the image and use this tool. And it's a very powerful tool when used correctly because it can make a lot of difference to your image. And then hue versus luminance is just changing the brightness of uh, certain parts. And again, lumen versus size, dealing with black and white. Again, I haven't really dwelled into this too much. And yeah, moving on. Now this is the selection range. So if you click on a certain part of the image, you can uh, outline uh, anything and you can just work on that rather than the whole image. So you're basically telling DaVinci that you just want to work on a specific part of the image. So I'll just give you a brief, uh, a brief thing of what this does. Uh, so if we just click on that, and then if we just click this highlight selection here. So in this node, we've told DaVinci that we want to do it somewhere within the background and click on that. And then with these sliders, hue, saturation, luminance, we can sort of control what area we want to dim or make brighter or just change color completely. So right now it's, it knows we want to change the seats and the blues and it knows we want to change color. So let's say if we did want to do that again, I'm just giving an example here and make them a little bit, you know, a little bit more washed out. We can do that. There we go. And uh, that's done that. And then as you can see, um, if we get rid of this node, they look a lot more bluer. And then now again, we can show you an example. So that's what it was like before, as you can see, it's on the very, the very blue. And then, uh, oh, sorry. And then I just I did undo that. And then now, yeah. And then now you can see that they're a little bit more washed out. Yeah, it's just a very rough job. If you want to do this, there are, you can use the other tools that I've just shown you, like the, the hue versus luminance, and you can uh, make it more accurate with the sliders. And yeah, that's, uh, and then the next section is the window section. So again, you can choose specific parts of the image you want to work with. Um, I always find the circle and the square are the best because you can sort of make layers to the image. You can add multiple different colors and yeah, you can work off each one in a different way. And again, it's very useful. And you've got the softness tools down here, so you can uh, fade them in, so it doesn't look, into, look doesn't look too obvious. And I've used this tool multiple times; it's very helpful. And then this is the tracking. So if you want to track uh, a certain color into the frame, we'll uh, come over to here. You've always got to make sure you've got a window on, either a square or a circle, and then you can move over to the tracking. And then uh, the tracking system knows that you want to. Um, track that part of it. You can also track the frame, which again is just keyframing and you can keyframe it yourself, do it offhand. But it's always best just to, for starting out, just to um, get used to it, allow DaVinci to do the tracking for you. And then we can uh, get rid of that. Go back. And uh, what else have we got? Yeah, so we've got uh, this uh, left-hand side gallery here. This is for, uh, if you are, for me, uh, important is for when, if you are working in a scene um, that's uh, all shot in a particular room and um, you want to create different looks for it, you can grab your own still and uh, you can just sort of uh, copy and paste the look onto other parts of the shot, onto the other shots. So I'll give you a quick example here. If I just right, right hand click and just grab the still and then Let's say I wanted to create another look or I wanted to, um, you know, show the cinematographer that I want to do. I've got the choice of three others or we want to work off different looks, see which one's better. I can save that still. And uh, let's say uh, this image for me, um, let's say, I don't know, I want to push the, the blues in a little bit harsher or I want to make it a little bit warmer. You know, I can, I can push up on the gamma and I can just yeah, a little bit. Now, as you can see, it's not as blue. There's obviously a lot more oranges in there, but I can grab that still. And then I can just sort of decide which one my favorite is. So right now we've got the, uh, the, 
the more warmer look or we've got the original and then we can just literally go over to it and click the mi uh, middle wheel scroller and click it in and it will place in automatically and as you can see it's now gone back to its original and again it's helpful if you're working with different scenes because you can just uh, copy the look into it straight away you still might have to make a little some changes because the lighting might be different it might be more next to a window you might have to play with the highlights a, a bit more but uh, for an overall start and overall getting the look of a certain room uh, i find the gallery to be very important um, also uh dimitri resolve has its own in-house lut system so if you are working with a particular camera you can choose which look you want and uh, you can sort of go off that look. I never use this. I always prefer to just create my own look from scratch. Um, but again, you can you can get ideas from this and you can build on them, I guess. Uh, so I guess it is helpful. And yeah, and then let's go over to the node system. Um, it goes, it's a tree system. So each node is doing something different. You can name them. You can add layers to the nodes if you want to. Uh, you know, you can you can fit multiple nodes on there. Right now, these shots are only working with at least three, no, no less. Um, and yeah, it's uh, there's not much really to say other than um, make sure every time you're doing something big or creating uh, a new bit of the grade or you want to add something, always add a new node. Uh, always make sure you're naming the node because it's very important. If you want to go back to it, uh, you'll if you just right click node label down here, uh, you'll um, You'll get to just know which node's doing straight away. Uh, like I haven't named this uh, last node here, but I believe that was me sorting the saturation out. So I can just saturation there, and then we know we know when we come back to it that that node is dealing with the saturation and uh, what each node's doing. And yeah, so uh, that is everything I believe. Oh, as well, uh, Da Vinci has its own in-house. Um, uh, VFX and light FX uh, for color. Uh, each one's doing something different. Um, there's a lot that I've used in this project. It's definitely more than I've ever used in another project uh, because some of them can be very helpful. Uh, it's depending on what you want to do. Um, but uh, again, when I recreate a certain look for you in a bit, I'll show you which ones that I use and why they're working so well. So, okay, so uh, what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to try and recreate this look to as closely as I possibly can. It's um, So what I did before is just in case um, I prefer this look, I'm just going to grab that still. So then I know that when I come back to it, if I don't like the look I'm creating now, I can just put it back. So I'm going to delete these nodes for you. Um, yeah, there we go. So what's important for me is when I first got this footage is that... Um, I noticed how natural uh, the environment was. You know, it's just the start of the film, the two lads are on a train, the meeting for the first time. There's not much going on in terms of color anyway, but what is nice is the colors in the train. Uh, it's set late night is, so the trains are all very vintage and the colors look very nice. So I just wanted to bring them out and not sort of ruin the atmosphere with, uh, you know, my own sort of way. So I just wanted to do it as natural as, naturally as I could. And yeah, I, th I believe I, sort of achieved that in a way but right now we're gonna sort of go for it again but again it's important not to go too much with the color that you are putting onto the image because sometimes uh, it can ruin it and just uh it's important to experiment because you don't know what's really good when you start off but it's always uh for me always best to get another another person's view on it you are staring at the monitor for a while while you are grading uh, so it's always best to have someone there or at least when you've made a big change, get someone's opinion on it, see what it looks like and uh, make sure it matches the scene. And so on and so on. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to here and I'm just going to go into the bottom left. And what this does is this white balances the image. So if you just click that, it's then going to tell uh, DaVinci that I want to reset the levels completely. I want to start from scratch and then we can start uh basically start uh putting our own palette on there so at the moment it's looking very washed out so i'm going to go in and uh bring in that contrast just a little bit just to get them highlights a little bit stretched there we go that looks good for me i don't want to go too crazy with it and then now i'm going to start with the lift 
Uh, so at the moment, the image is way too bright. So I'm going to bring down the lift a lot here. As you can see, already it's looking very washed out. Now, what I keep doing is I keep referring back to the original image. So I know sort of if I've come too far with the lighting, um, but right now it's looking it's looking like it's getting there. Uh, so yeah, it's good brightness for me. Just bringing them shadows a little bit. And what we can do now is bring in the gamma and just brighten them colors. Oh, sometimes that happens. There we go. Yeah, and then I think if we go before and after, we can sort of see that all we've done is just bring the image down, but already it's way less washed out. You can already see what's going on, um, and so on and so on. And then what we can do now is we can go over to the shadows and we can definitely lift them a little bit because it looks like he's in the middle of the day. I don't look like it's too heavy. Uh, and then yeah, and then we can work on the brightness of the image. Now at the moment, I think it's a little bit too bright, a little bit too dark. Sorry, so we can just lift it a little bit. Perfect. And we can check our levels. Uh, I don't think there'll be too much crazy going on. We can sort of see that they're all sort of even right now. Now, if this uh, parade for me goes over the 896 line or uh, below the 128 line, it means it's a little bit too dark. So I think we're going to have to brighten the image. There we go. Bringing them shadows a little bit. Yeah, so I think that's good for now. Um, yeah. And then what we can do now is we can just name this little node again, uh, make sure we're naming them. Uh, we can do just do levels. So we've just adjusted the levels and we can add a new node and we can move over to our window selection now. Now, what this does is just add in another layer so we can play around with the levels again, uh, but it won't affect what we've already done, it will just add on to what we've done already. And we can go into the gamma and then we can bring down the front of the image without, it doesn't, as you can see, it's not really affecting the background. Um, but it's already looking better. So that's what it is now. And then if I delete this node, that's what it is there. So we've already added a, like a, a depth of field basically. So we're more focused in on the main character. Uh, there we go. And for me, uh, I want to add a bit of my own colour. Now, uh, before I added a bit of blue, but this time I'm going to add a little bit of orange. We can sort of see which one works the best. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our gamma wheel there and just push it slightly forward. There we go. Uh, there we go. And then now we've just added a little bit of orange into the mix. Again, I'll show you what it is now and then get rid of this. You can sort of see that already we're starting to get a better image. And then now I'm going to deal with the saturation because to me the image just looks a bit dry. Uh, the colors are there, but they're not exactly popping yet. So in fact, I'm just going to go to my levels actually and just increase the saturation just by a little bit. Now, as you can see, if you just follow this line here, as I stretch out the saturation, you'll be able to see that they're slowly increasing. Like right now, uh, there's way too much going on there. We don't want that. And as we bring it down, it slowly goes black and white. Uh, I really liked between about there. I think that's a nice, that's a nice sort of contrasted image right there. Um, we're not too far off from the image we had before, but what I like, uh, what I've noticed now is these sort of greens in the background. Um, and uh, I, I, I would like to, if I can, just bring out them. Or if I, what I will show you is how I did the browns. So first thing we want to go over to is our window tool here. And I want to just uh, grab the background. And I want to just 
I don't need to highlight too much as long as I'm just highlighting the browns. Uh, it should be okay. And let me just check. I'm still recording. And then what we want to do is we want to grab, go into our selection tool. And just what we've done is we've is we've added a layer within the image. So as you can see this node here, uh, most of uh, the node is grayed out and there's only a little square that's colored in. That's telling DaVinci that we just want to work on that square. That part of the image is the only thing we want to work on. So if we go over to here and want to make it darker, we can do that. As you can see, it's bringing in the lights a lot more in the background. Uh, and if we want to make it brighter, that's what we can do. But for now, we're just going to make it a little bit darker, just because I really like the reflection here. Uh, at the moment, we're just going to brighten it. As you can see, that's already made a difference to the image. That's what it is now. There we go. Now, as you can see, uh, at the moment, we've not actually faded it out. So if we go over to here, we can see we've got soft one, which just brings, softens the edges, which again, just blends it into the image a little bit better uh, and kind of just hides the palette within the image. There you go, so that's that. If I show you it after, we can see we've just brought out the colors a little bit more, uh, made it accessible. There we go, nice one. So yeah, um, for right now, I'm pretty happy with that uh, uh, start of the grade. So if we go onto gallery and click on that image, we can see we've made a very different look to the original, but uh, both very good looks. And if we grab that still, we can then decide which uh, look we want to go off. And then from that, uh, start to develop the rest of the scene and the rest of um, uh, the rest of the train scene and uh, decide which look we prefer and stick with the skin tones and stuff like that. Um, so for the last node, I've noticed that his skin tones are a little bit washed out. Uh, they're not the greatest. So what we can do is just add another node. And again, we can go over to our selection tool here. And right now we've selected the whole image. Uh, and the only thing we're working on is all of the outside stuff. So if we go over to here, uh, the little arrows with the two dots, uh, one below and one above, what we can do is we can invert and uh, that switches it and then we can just bring in sort of what we want to work on. Let's bring it a bit. There's a lot of brightness going on in the scene. Okay, so that's sort of getting his skin tones. There we go. So like, as you can see, it's the skin, the, the light on the skin tone is matching the light outside. So that'll be good for now. And then we can move over to the, uh, and we can turn them highlights up or we can turn them down. And we can turn them up a little bit because it just makes that image a little bit softer. It adds a little bit of depth to the eye feel. And then we can go over to the highlights and we can push them highlights to be a little bit blue because I feel like that's what is going on. And we can just soften them up just a little bit. Oh, they're too soft, actually. And you bring them out a little bit more. Uh, yeah, perfect. And if we go on to what it is now, if we go on to what it is now, uh, with, and then if we go into what it was before, we can see we've just added, increased the highlights a little bit and made it feel like uh, a little bit brighter. Uh, and, uh, and again, um, we can we can still grab that still and then we can like sort of go off which one we prefer and then again build the scene. Uh, so yeah, and now what we can do is move on. Move on from that and go to the next part. So the next scene I'm going to show you is the uh, later on in the film is the party scene. Uh, now, what I was saying before with the whole natural, keeping to the natural environment, uh, this scene was fun for me to do because I could recreate my own look. I could, uh, I had multiple reference images that the cinematographer sent me. And uh, yeah, I could 
I had a lot of fun with it basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you the scene before. I'm just going to play it through. Okay, as you can see, they're all having a good time at the party. There's a lot of colour there, as you can see, it was lit very well. Uh, but because it was shot in log, uh, the footage was all washed out, which means I could add more colour to it, basically. I could play around with it a lot more. Uh, whereas if this wasn't shot in log, the colours you see would be there. So it would be much harder for me to recreate my own sort of atmosphere. There we go, and also having a good time. Uh, I'll pause it there. I don't want to reveal too much. You'll have to wait till the film comes out. <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my grade in and play it. Now, as you can see, it's come a long way. Uh, we've definitely added in a lot more colour, a lot more saturation. There's definitely more of an atmosphere uh, going on. There we go. And uh, yeah, this again, this, uh, this was probably the longest I spent on um most seen at the moment uh, just because there was a lot going on um you know at the same time these are having a party but we've still got to focus on the two characters dancing so i didn't want to make it feel too dark and yeah there we go so yeah what i'm going to do now is rather than recreate uh, a look uh, i'm just going to take you through the process so again i started off with um with uh, the uh, the white balance and the, the leveling of all the images, bringing it down so it wasn't too flat. Uh, and then uh, once I sort of had uh, the correct levels, I'll tell you what, I can show you the scopes now actually. Yeah, so as you can see in this particular scene, it's very saturated, we're nearly touching the lines. Uh, but again, it doesn't feel like I've abused the saturation, it feels very natural to the environment um, and so on and so on. As you can see in this particular shot, there are way more blues and there are reds. Uh, the blues are definitely overpowering here. Uh, even still, there's a lot of reds uh, clipping onto the skin tones, but the background is very blue. And then if we go onto here, again, uh, blue and red are the two opposite colors. So I feel like um, that's why it stands out so well. Uh, and yeah, and then what I went on to do then is work on the skin tones. So if we get rid of this node, uh, you can't really see the difference, but um, I was just softening them up, adding the blur to them. Um, so if we if we look at this image without the blur, we can see that those reds are very harsh. Uh, there's a lot of noise going on um, on this guy's face here. Uh, but if we add in um, the blurs, it sort of um, smoothens out the skin tones. And uh, yeah, we can get away with them very dark lights, hitting them very bright ones. And yeah. And the next one, again, the blur is a tool, actually, I use in the open FX. So if we go into the library here, and I use box blur, and then it has its own settings. So if we go on it, we can choose how much we want to use. So you can see that's very blurry. Again, I didn't want to abuse this too much. Uh, I want it to feel like a very soft, glowy sort of uh, atmosphere. So I went with the blur. Um, and then you can sort of blend it as well, and you can stuff like that again very useful in certain scenarios and the glow the glow is important because i had a lot of um, blue and uh, red lights there anyway um so uh, i could easily um bring them out if i wanted to but the saturation would have been increased so i added the glow so it did it automatically so it just made them lights a whole bunch vibe a whole more vibrant and yeah so if we delete this node we can already see um how uh, dull the image is and how much that glow is actually doing and again like the blur you can sort the settings out you can increase it you can decrease it do whatever really and then right now it's like in some horror film so if we just redo that and do sorry and then add that color back in and yeah um again uh I had fun with this because I could just recreate my own look. And then once I did, I did exactly the same with the uh, with the train scene and I did a different look and then we sort of decided which one we preferred, which one we liked the most. And yeah, and then just went off that really, kept talking about ideas. Again, I had a lot of references I could go off. And yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was very fun. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to show you 
if I just then cut it off. Also, this is very important um, uh, for the, the before and after, so you can sort of see how far you've come. I think I might have already mentioned that uh, is a particular shot uh, within the scene. Uh, I think it's this shot. Okay, so now everything that I've ever learned, I think this this whole scene was very huge because it's the it's the penultimate moment within their their characters' relationship. You know, there's a they're in this nice sort of big room, but it's lit very differently. They go to multiple different corners of the room. So it was my job then to sort of make sure it feels natural, make sure their skin tones don't differ uh, from one part of the room to the other, make sure where they are is, make sure that they are placed in a natural environment. And the see the sort of vibe we were going for is very romantic. So I knew I used to have, needed to use a lot of creamy reds, uh, like very nice natural sort of whites. And yeah, and just very, make it feel very romantic. So if I show you the before of this shot, and then if I show you the after, you can see that it's certainly come a long way. But in this particular shot, I had to use um, some tracking. So if I just show you the shot, uh, as you can see, the skin tones uh, are very nice. For me, it still sometimes goes a little bit dark over here. But, um, it's very hard to sort of figure out how to do that for now. So if I get rid of the node I added the tracking shot on, uh, which is here, as you can see, it's got a little keyframe icon there. Uh, you can sort of see now that as he gets closer to him, it becomes a lot darker. Uh, and you can't really see their face as much. But if I just pause it there and then add in the keyframe, you can see that what we've done is brighten the image a bunch and made them a lot more visible. And it doesn't feel, feel as harsh. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through my process. Um, so what, what I did, I knew I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, nodes at the moment. Um, and so I went over to my keyframe section here. Um, and I knew I wanted to work on correct to eight. So I just clicked right click and added static, added a dynamic keyframe. Now, the difference between the two is static is mainly just for working on, uh, you know, stuff that isn't, um, isn't animation. It's just there. It's just, you don't really use it often, but dynamic keyframes, you can animate on them so you can blend them. You can come in of the keyframe, come out of the keyframe, and you can sort of change the value of one thing uh, to another thing. And that's exactly what I wanted to do for this shot. So I just clicked on dynamic keyframe and I found uh, my hero frame. Uh, which is what I call it, a frame that um, where you can sort of see his entire skin. Um, I chose best there because I knew that that's when the camera sort of changed lighting. Uh, you know, we're a bit closer to the other guy now. He's, he's definitely casting more of a shadow and that's when the reds got more harsh. So that's where I added my keyframe. And then I found the end of the frame and I just um, added that keyframe there and I put the keyframe into this one. So it blended in rather than it's just a quick jump uh, and it made it feel way more natural to the environment. So if we go over here, I can show you what I did. There we go. So as you can see, the, the waveform is uh, very different and it stayed very, very smooth. There we go. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll take you through what I did. So again, I can grab that still. And I can delete that node. There we go. So I can, again, I can find my hero frame. And I can delete. I can delete. If I go on, add a node. So first, I'm going to add a new node and go on to corrector and node label. And I'm going to call that keyframe. Reds, which they are way too harsh. Uh, and I'm going to go find my hero frame, which is just there. Right click and add a dynamic keyframe. Move it over. 
I don't know what she's saying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get them reds. Just down just a little bit. So as you can see, if you look at the level of the reds when we get to the end of the keyframe, uh, it drops just a little bit. And then also what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lift the shadows. I don't like how much shadows are playing. Too much. I'm not sure I need to put a little bit more words back in. see now this is uh, it's way less uh, way more brighter so if we go in from before like that, you can see that he moves closer and then if we just pause it there uh, you can see that we've done a lot yeah so if we just pause it there back and then if we Get rid of that keyframe we can see how dark it is in this right hand section here and then we can just edit and redo edit and do so then again we've listed it a lot and just put the original back in yeah and that's that um i wish there was um well i could show you but unfortunately i'll bring it out of time now um What's good about DaVinci is that there is a free version you can download online. Um, there are multiple different types of footage you can get with it as well, all shot on log. So you can have a play around with them. You can um, sort of find your own way of learning DaVinci. There is a lot to it. Again, it's not just the color grading software. You've got, um, you've got editing in there. You've got VFX. You've even got sound design. But uh, it's very, the industry practice is to use this for color grading and uh, yeah and again it is very good it's one of the best i've used and uh, i've definitely found myself come a long way in the past year and a half after learning like multiple different ways of grading uh, being able to read the scopes being able to animate and do all these type of things it definitely makes the process a lot easier uh, using the fx as well because they help a lot they uh, if you use the right one uh, you know you can you can you can be a very creative with it and again, just have a play around with them, see which suits you best. Now, once you've got all your shots and once you've finished all the notes from the director or the notes from the cinematographer, is anything you want to change, you want to go back and have a look at the gallery, see if you prefer a different look, uh, you can finally um, uh, deliver, deliver the film. So if we switch the page, deliver here, uh, you can see that again it comes up with a, a different interface you know you've got all the different types of things you can export here you've got the file name much like any other software you want to save it to the right place uh, make sure you don't lose it among all your different work because uh, we changed the aspect ratio before we want to make sure we're putting it back to the 4k version it was on which i believe was uh, this one oh no it wasn't that uh, Yeah, that one. Yeah, there we go. And then uh, you can sort of deal with how you want to export it. I know, I knew this project was going back into Premiere Pro. So if you yourself are doing that, you want to export it as a Premiere XML. And then what that'll do is ex export each individual clip, much like the XML, um, and place it into uh, uh, Premiere Pro, all color graded and all finished. So you can uh, change the edit if you needed to. Or do or put animation on there. Um, this little yellow line here is just indicating how much of the film you want to export. So obviously we want all of it. So right now all of this is exported. 
uh, it's all looking good. Uh, individual clips or single clips, want to go with individual clips, so you can just drag it in straight away without doing it all yourself. A uh, single clip is just all done with you just dragging it in. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Uh, click on Premiere XML, and then what you want to do is just add this to the render queue. And then you can uh, start the render and go from there. And uh, you're all set and you're all done. And yeah. And then once that's rendered, you can then give it to the editor or whoever you're working with. and They can put that into uh, Premiere. And yeah, uh, that's everything for today. Uh, thank you so much for listening in. Uh, again, I've been, it's been nice to work on a project like this. I feel like I've learned a lot. There are a lot of different uh, scenes that I could grade, that I could sort of come up with my own vision for and then discuss with a cinematographer. Um, I definitely learned a lot. And yeah, thank you very much. I hope you've got some sort of information out of this. Uh, it's my first time doing something like this. so But I've had uh, a lot of fun. And it's been really great. So thanks again. And I'll see you guys later.